Idaho State Police has a new perspective on investigation that gives them a literal bird's eye view of the scene. Jody had me suit up to help. Safely inside my bee-proof uniform, I entered the swarm. Going up into that hole, very claustrophobic, very warm, and very loud. During a KLEW investigation in June, ITD data showed that more crashes happen here at the east entrance to the Clearwater River Casino and Lodge than here at the west entrance. However, crashes that KLEW has covered over recent years have all been here on the west side. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, this isn't just happening here at Mountain Dew Skate Park. This is a problem affecting several of Lewiston's parks, and it's far more concerning than what you can see here, graffiti and garbage. This is just one of the crime scenes that officers were investigating today in that double homicide. According to the sex offender registry, this is where Richard Carlin was living. The link these cases have in common, the method of entry. The burglar used a pry bar to force his way through the doors. Candy says while she's waiting on a response from the city, her biggest concern right now is the health and safety of her tenants. About 12 hours after the ball dropped at the stroke of midnight, Another New Year's tradition was sending close to 100 people into the frigid Snake River, including me. But first, you may be wondering why in the name of Baby New Year anyone would want to do this. Oh, Shannon, how long did it take to warm up, to actually warm up? Well, funny enough, I was told this would happen, but it is actually true. Everything feels a lot warmer after you get out of the water. <laughs> and it's even harder to hit the Mega Millions jackpot, one in more than 302 million. And the chances of hitting them both, one in 88 quadrillion. Well, as Anna says, I still have a chance then. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a big number, quadrillion. Yeah. We're actually so close that I have to wear ear protection. I'll show you just how close we are. This maroon helicopter behind me is fueling up to go back out to fight the fire. I'm reporting from the safety of inside my car because the wind outside is bad. Every single glass pane has been busted out and glass still litters the ground. But police say the damage is much worse behind these boarded up doors. One gram of heroin is equal to about one of these sugar packets. Two grams here in the valley cost between three and four hundred dollars. Compare that with one ounce of meth, which costs around five hundred dollars. The closure happened yesterday after routine water testing found that roughly one month after it reopened, fecal bacteria levels were again at unsafe levels. This is the list of all the road construction going on this month in Lewiston. And while it may look like a lot, road supervisor Keith Bingman tells me these are actually just two separate projects. Oh boy. <laughs> It's the time of year when every drop in the bucket, or in this case, red kettle, counts. This massive scale cleanup, ugh, it's gonna take some time. Reporting in Anatone, Shannon Mowdy, KLEW News. For the West Valley Marching Band, Saturday's band day was an excellent opportunity to practice for their upcoming appearance in New York City. But the other reason Jim Lauk's group made the hour and a half journey to Moscow gets closer to home. We wanted to just thank the Vandal community for their great support of one of our former students, Jace Malik, who passed away this past year. As a fullback for the West Valley Eagles out of Spokane, Malik was a force to be reckoned with. Very physical, he had a huge heart, and he poured every ounce of energy into every play. That heart was just a part of Jace. Laux remembers him as compassionate, friendly, and always helping others. In his senior year, Jace earned the attention of Idaho Vandals coach Paul Petrino, who made him his first pick for the 2015 class. The day after committing to Idaho, Jace was diagnosed with bone cancer. It's a tough time for us. But Petrino kept his promise, honoring Jace's scholarship and making him a student assistant coach. In true form, Jace stood by his team until the end. On Sunday, February 28th, 
The Idaho Vandals lost a family member when Jace Malik's battle against cancer ended. But through the loss, these two communities have gained something, a bond that stretches over 86 miles. I know the West Valley community just was so appreciative of the way that the entire Moscow and, and uh, University of Idaho community reached out to us. A fitting legacy for a man who was always giving back. And I think of Jace a lot, uh, he was just a battler and a scrapper. When you're really excellent at what you do and you have a heart of compassion, uh, that was Jace Malik. You may have seen all the work being done at 718 Main Street in Lewiston. But it isn't the pounding, grinding, or banging that has people stopping and traffic slowing to take a look. We were quite surprised at the gem that was uncovered. This project at Largent started a little over a week ago. The second day in, after Don had removed the tiles from the original column, the rounded columns were found underneath some old dry rotted lumber. And luckily, I found that dry rot, and it was structurally sound. It's all concrete and steel. So uh, the owner said, let's go ahead and, and expose the front and see what it looks like. What they found is more than anyone could have imagined. Hidden underneath what Craig guesses to be nearly 86-year-old stucco, a beautiful example of Lewiston's past. And after receiving 500 likes per hour on their Facebook photos of the find, Largens has decided to change their plans. So we were able to salvage what's here. It's structurally sound and uh, we're going to showcase it. Perhaps the most interesting thing about this whole story is why Largence was renovating in the first place. Well, actually, we were trying to bring it up into 2016 style, and uh, as we uncovered it, we were just kind of surprised that we went back a century. Sometimes people do silly things. I think it's really unique to find so much history covered with stucco. Again, people trying to modernize. But by some strange miracle. So it's kind of a happy accident that you found that dry run. Very much, very much, yeah. It made my day. This summer, we're all trying to enjoy the outdoors while avoiding the scorch of the sun. But the threat of sunburn isn't the only thing you have to worry about. When it's sitting there taking the radiant heat that and the direct sunlight, it builds up a temperature. It can be one of those things that's kind of an unforeseen hazard. Lewiston Fire Chief Travis Michael Buss says playground equipment can put children at risk of contact burns. I followed along as he used a temperature gun to test slides, oh, so seats, and swings. So they're sitting on 141 degrees. Metal equipment is an obvious risk, but even shiny reflective plastics can burn little ones when in the direct sun, and it can happen quickly. 137 degrees, right? 140 degrees right there. And they're gonna sit down with their shorts. Boom, they're gonna be burned within probably 10 seconds, they're gonna have a first degree burn. But a child's exposure could last much longer than a few seconds as they haven't developed an aversion to painful burns. It may take a little while longer before they react and by then the burning process has already started. The longer the skin is exposed to the hot surface, the worse the burn will become. Second degree burns can cause redness, pain and blisters, making secondary infections another risk. And left untreated, a simple first-degree burn can actually progress deeper into the skin, becoming a second-degree burn. You need to cool a burn for up to 15 minutes to truly stop the burning process. 